House of Representatives urges Senate to delete dead voters from register. West African Examination Council set to conduct 2023 examinations. Military warns politicians against Scotland May 29th inauguration. In business, federal government launches first gemstone market in Nigeria. And in the international scene, South Africans demand return of world largest diamond in Queen's Maze. And in sport, Wasim Him leads Napoli to score to title after 33 years. And welcome to Standard Press Television News Channel. I'm Fosse Bahim. The House of Representatives has asked the Independent National Electoral Commission to develop a system to delete dead voters from the register. This was the resolution of the maker after a motion of urgent national importance by a member, Leke Abijid, drawing the attention of the House of what he described as irregularities observed during the 2023 general elections. Honorable Abiji Day, who moved the motion, said his late father's name was seen in the INEC register. The lawmaker further urged the Electoral Commission to deregister any voter who, does, who doesn't vote in two election cycle. The House earlier directed the National Assembly cleric to transmit the bill for the constitutional amendment to provide for uniform retirement age for the judicial officers and pension rights to President Mahmoud Buhari. The decision of the House followed the passage of the bill by the Sokoto State House of Assembly, thereby meeting the provision of Section 9, Subsection 2 of the Constitution for two third approval of state assemblies. Troops of the Nigerian military have killed over 70 suspected terrorists in counter insurgency operations in the northeast region. Director of Defense Media Operations Major General Musa Damadami disclosed this while briefing newsmen at the operation of the military in the last two weeks. Major General Damadami said more than 140 terrorists were also arrested during the period, with several weapons, including improvised explosive devices, recovered. According to the defense spokesperson, over 500 members of the Islamic State of West African province have surrendered to the military. Meanwhile, the military has also confirmed that two of the Chubuk schoolgirls abducted in April 2014 have been re rescued, in addition to over 150 other civilians rescued during various military operations in the Northeast. The West African Examination Council is set to conduct a 2023 West African Senior School Certificate Examinations. Head of WAEC National Office, Patrick's Eric Han, while addressing newsmen in Lagos, confirmed the examination has been scheduled for Monday, May 8th to Friday, June 23rd, 2023. Mr. Patrick said the level of insecurity in the country was a concern and that some areas require extra security arrangements, saying they are liaising with the Inspector General of Police, Brigadier Commanders, other security agencies and state government to ensure that the examination is conducted under a safe environment. He said a total of 1,621,853 candidates from 20,851 secondary schools across Nigeria registered for the examination, adding that 798,810 are males, while 823,433 are females. The defense headquarters has reiterated it earlier warning to those planning to scuttle the May 29 handing over from President Mahmoud Buhari to the President elect Bula Ahmad Tinubu. This is just as the military high command said a board of inquiries has been constituted to investigate the allegations against its sector commander operation Safe Heaven by the Atiab community under the auspices of Atiab Community Development Association in Zangon Katap local government area of Kaduna State. Our correspondent Umokoso Mohammed has more. It could be recalled that the Atiyab people had faulted the security report on the recent killings in the area by the sector commander, Operation Safe Heaven, in Southern Kaduna Brigadier General Themoti Opurum, saying his report was biased, unbalanced and misleading. The group therefore called for Brigadier General Opurum's removal from the state. But reacting to the development, the Director of Defence Media Operations, Major General Musa Damadami, while fielding questions from newsmen, said, the military is a national organization that is always ready to help. Major General Damadami said the military had not seen reasons why the inauguration of the president-elect wouldn't hold 
noting that the police and all the security agencies were working hand in hand to neutralize any possible threat. Um Kusum Mohammed reporting for Standard Voice News. The Zafra State Primary Health Care Board has given adequate assurance that no child in the state will be disfranchised from receiving the polio vaccine as over 1 million children are targeted for the vaccination exercise in the state. This was disclosed by the Executive Secretary of the Board, Dr. Tukur Ismaila, during a media engagement organized by the State Primary Health Care Board in Gusau. The Executive Secretary, who, is re who was represented by the Board Health Educator, Denja Korea said, media should play a key role in the success of activities of PHCB in the state. Mr. Denja further explained that the integrated exercise consists of fractional inactivated polio virus vaccine. He advised parents and guidance to take full advantage of the program and ensure availing their children to the centers to receive the vaccine that would commence from 11th to 16th May 2023. Endless controversies has trailed the non-implementation of the minimum wage in Zamfara, Abia, Rivers, Kaduna and many other states in Nigeria. Despite a series of negotiations between the organized labor and the state government, the full implementation of 30,000 Naira minimum wage has remained a mirage in the state. Our correspondent Rahma Ibrahim reports. Workers had on several occasions threatened to down tools, but they always backed down when the government came up with fresh promises. This has brought open confrontation between the state civil servants and the labor leaders, as the workers believed that their leaders were compromised. During the Workers' Day celebration, a group of agreed civil servants staged a protest in some of the states, demanding immediate dissolution of the leadership of the state's wing of the Nigeria Labor Congress, NLC. It could be recalled that on April 18, 2019, President Muhammad Buhari ascended to the National Minimum Wage Act 2019. But four years later, controversies still trail its implementation in many states of the Federation. Many states and local government workers are left to groan over the inability of some governors to approve the 30,000 never minimum wage. The issue came to the front burner again as Nigerian workers joined their counterparts across the world earlier in the week to commemorate May Day. The senior special assistant on National Assembly matters, Senator Ita Enang, said then that the development had made it compulsory for all employers of labor in Nigeria to pay their workers the sum of 30,000 naira. Rahma Ibrahim Dosar reporting for Standard Voice Television. The United Agency for International Development has charged stakeholders in Zamfara State to accelerate effort toward promoting universal health coverage in the state. The call was made by Chief of Party of the USAID-funded Local Health System Sustainability Project, Dr. Folale Olusola Falaye in Kaduna, during a basic health care provision fund gateways forum and state oversight committee meeting for the state. The meeting was organized by the State Ministry of Health with the support of USAID, LHSS and had participants from the health sectors within and outside the state. According to Dr. Fulusola Falaye, Zamfara is among the beneficiaries of the project aimed at strengthening the local health system toward achieving universal health coverage, urging the participants to maximize their support and cooperation toward achieving universal health coverage. Executive Secretary of Zamfara State Contributory Health Care Management Agency, Dr. Abdul Qadir Shinkafi, described the project as a welcome development to the state, saying the state has achieved a lot in the area of enrollment and awareness creation as regards universal health coverage. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has secured the final forfeiture of 324 properties recovered for the Kano State Pension Fund trustees. According to the commission statement, Justice Iyang Akwa of the Federal High Court Abuja gave the order of the final forfeiture while ruling on a motion by the commission seeking the final forfeiture of the properties which were reasonably suspected to be proceeds of unlawful activities in Kano State Pension Fund trustees. The property comprised of 168 homes situated at Sheikh Jafar Mahmoud Adam Bindirawa City, Kano, 122 houses at Sheikh Nasiru Kabara, Kano, and 38 houses at Sheikh Khalifa Isaac Rabiu City, Kanu. Former Deputy President of the Nigerian Senate, Ike Ikwe Rumadu, his wife, Beatrice 
and their middle man, medical doctor, Obina Obita, to receive their sentence following their conviction for organ trafficking in March in the first verdict of its kind under the Modern Slavery Act. Mr. Eko Romadu and his wife and Obita were convicted of conspiracy to arrange the travel of a young man addressed as David Owamini to Britain in order to exploit him for his kidney, which was needed for the lawmaker's sick daughter, Sonia. After a six-week trial and conviction at the old Burley London Central Criminal Court, the Equerumadus and their doctor might face a harsh reality for a possible 10-year jail term for violating the Modern Slavery Act, the judge. Recall that the prosecutors, huge Davis Casey told the court that Equerumadus and Obita had treated it the man and other potential donors as disposable asset spare part for reward saving saying they centered an emotionally cold commercial transaction with the man. In the last few days, the Nigerian Senate, the House of Representatives and the Nigerians in the Diaspora Commission had written letters to the British authorities seeking leniency for the embattled lawmaker. Prior to this, the former Nigerian president, Olusogo Obasanjo has also written to the British authority seeking on behalf of the legislator. And on business. The Nigerian government has made a significant move toward boosting the country's mineral and mining sector by inaugurating the first ever gemstone market. Newsman reported that this was initiated by the Ministry of Mines and Steel Development less than 25 days before President Muhammad Buhari's administration ends. During the lunch event, which took place in Ibadan, Oyo State, the Minister of Mines and Steel Development, Olami Lekun Ajebait, highlighted that the Mineral and Mining Act of 2007 supported individuals and families as rightful owners of mining sites, not traditional rulers. Mr. Adegbite also emphasized that the gemstone market would give Nigerians an industry-based competitive advantage, adding that the minister had mentioned the establishment of the gemstone market back in January 2020, stating that it was an effort to formalize the gemstone business, which has become an international industry. And the international scene. South Africans are demanding the world's largest known clear quartz diamond on the late Queen Elizabeth May's following her death. The Great Star of Africa, or Colonian, is the largest known clear quartz diamond in the world, which was mined in South Africa in 1905 and was given to the British royal family as a gift when South Africa was under British rule. Because that, some Africans expressed contempt when the Queen died over her alleged rule in the colonization of the African continent, which led to the green cause in South Africa for the diamond to be returned as they believe it belongs to them. And in sports? Victor Osimhe made history on Thursday night, powering Napoli to win a Serie A title after 33 years. The Nigerian forward scored the decisive goal in the second half as Napoli came back from trailing to Sandy Lovric's opener at halftime. Osimhe's title deciding striker against Udin was his 22nd goal in 28 league appearances and rightly caused Bedlam among the massive ranked of a way fan who took over Udin. Injuries slowed down the 24-year-old striker's scoring rate, but between returning and a third injury in mid-October and the recent round of African Cup of Nations qualifier last month. Over that period, Osimham scored 23 times in 23 matches in all competitions, propelling Napoli to the brink of a historic Scudetto and becoming a bona fide fan idol even before he scored the goal that scored the title on Thursday. That has been the news from Standard Voice Television. During the news, here's a recap of the major headlines. 
House of Representatives or your Senate to delete dead voters from register. West African Examination Council set to conduct 2023 examinations. Military warns politicians against Scotland May 29th inauguration. In business, federal government launches first gemstone market in Nigeria. And in the international scene, South Africans demand return of world's largest diamond and Queen's Mace. And in sport, Wasim Him leads Napoli to score their two title after 33 years. That's the news. Thanks for watching. I'm Fazi Ibrahim. Do have a nice day.